Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Networking Thursday. We're very glad you're with us today. It is uh, August 24th, 2023. Please note this event is being recorded. It's currently live on Facebook. The recording will be on the Career DFW Facebook page and the Career USA YouTube channel for others to view in the future. By participating in this event, you give consent for your name and picture to appear. Please note that any comments you put in the Zoom chat window will not appear in the recording. For those people on Zoom, if you have any questions throughout the presentation, please just enter them into the chat window. Uh, for those watching on Facebook, thank you for joining us. Please just enter your questions you have into the comment field. Also, this is all about networking. You will probably should connect with everybody else who's on the call because they're all doing the same thing you are. So if you'd like to, in the Zoom chat window, you can put in your name, comma, uh, contact information, comma, kind of position you're looking for, comma, and uh, then a couple target companies. And look and see who else you can uh, maybe help out who is on the call today. And expand your connections. Connect with everybody else who's on the call today. Send them a personal note. Let them know you saw them today here on Networking Thursday. Well, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Jeff Morris. Back in 2008, I started a website called careerdfw.org, a website to help those who are unemployed in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. In 2012, I launched a second website, careerusa.org, to help those around the United States. That website was just recently rebuilt. Uh, please check it out. And if there's anything you see that doesn't work, please let me know so I can get it fixed. Uh, we're currently in the process of rebuilding the Career DFW site and hopefully that'll be out in the next uh, two to three weeks uh, for you to take a, take a look at. Uh, I have uh, written a book called What I've Learned About Your Job Search You May Not Know. It is available on Amazon. If you see me in person, I always have copies. Since 2007, I've been facilitating leading the North Dallas Plano Career Focus Group. Tomorrow, we have a great speaker that ties right into what we're doing today. So I'll tell you about that at the end of this session. And since 2017, I've been a member of the practice interview team. Remember, your LinkedIn profile, your resume, they're not going to get you your next job. They'll get you a phone call. How well you practice your interviewing skills, that's what's going to get you your next phone, uh, your next job. All right. Well, for every session for Networking Thursday, we've got a different speaker talking about networking. Networking is a pretty much the same thing. Well, yes and no. And everybody has a little bit different spin, maybe a different way to focus on things, something that you can carry with you, take away and apply in your job search. So today our speaker is Walt Glass. Uh, he runs the Interview Success Workshop. Many, many of you know him in the Dallas-Fort Worth area here. And today he's gonna to talk about networking, informational interviewing. So Walt, uh, thank you very much for being with us and it's all yours. Can you make me co-host or something so I can Yep, you should be good to go. Uh, it says I've been disabled as a participant for screen sharing. No, I just I just made there you co-host. Okay, there we go. There we go. How's that? Perfect. Well, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to another one o'clock session. Uh, this is probably session 9,742 for Jeff, as he has done so many of these throughout the weeks and over the years. And a lot of it, you know, was brought by COVID. And so today, uh, on Thursdays, he, we uh, kind of sp he splits it back and forth between resumes and networking. So today is networking day. And while there's many speakers on networking, I have a little bit different perspective and a little different way of approaching this that I might uh, think that, that can help you with the networking activities and in informational interviewing. My background is uh, I'm retired. I work for about well, I don't want to say 40 years, but it's been 40 years in the IT uh, industry, doing a multiple multiple roles over all of those years. Uh, got into the uh, uh, job seeking, helping situation with uh, an interview success workshop that I do. I'll talk a little bit more about that, but it's a uh, LinkedIn about page has the information about it. But today we're going to focus on the other side of the desk on networking and informational interviewing. Now this presentation came about, uh, came about from a person who who, who uh, one day he couldn't he couldn't do this thing this particular stuff and it was Dennis O'Hagan 
And so I have uh, plagiarized and borrowed uh, his material in certain places, and I'll, I'll show that where that is. And he also has a handout on some of the things that are included, and either Jeff or I will drop that in at the end of the session. But uh, Dennis, you know, passed away a few years back, a great person, great friend, and we miss him so much. Okay, you may have seen this survey or heard about this about networking that uh, most, most of the jobs are not posted and we spend a lot of time surfing. But you know what? A lot of the jobs are filled through networking. 40% um, filled through referrals, 7%. Now, this LinkedIn survey uh, is widely quoted. If you do a search on this, you'll see these numbers popping up everywhere and they're coming from LinkedIn. And then there's also some websites out there that says, no, that's not true, and here's why, and so this is not certified. But everyone pretty much agrees that, yes, a company will post jobs internally before they post them externally. That reduces their cost if they can find someone on the inside uh, before they go to the outside. And it's interesting enough that a lot of us spend time on our desk, and we're applying online, and we're looking at job boards, and we're uh, spending a lot of time with about a 2% return on getting a call from that particular uh, path. But if there are a lot of jobs that are filled through networking, why is it that only 7% of us go through a trying to get a referral process into a company and a job? And so then we're going to focus on why don't we do this? What is it that we can do to help improve that percentage today? Well, a LinkedIn study said that 35% of participants in their study said that a casual conversation through LinkedIn messaging lead, leads to a new opportunity. Now, we're in the era of online networking today, not as much on the personal side. So what are the benefits and how they did it? So Forbes did a study. Here's several statistics that saying uh, using the technology in our but just with like LinkedIn uh, is a great way to begin our networking process and to make build relationships and meet new people. Uh, so we can put some stuff online just like we could do in person. But at the same time, the in-person networking, which I think we're gradually getting back to a little bit more. But uh, in there, and HubSpot did a survey. So well, everybody believes pretty much face-to-face -face or better you know, and keeping our long-term relationships. And so I know you know that, but I'll throw out this numbers just to say, hey, for those of you that like numbers, what they're really telling us is that it's really good to do in-person over online. And we all know that, but there's some really strong statistics to back that up message. Uh, let's try to go for the person to person rather than the online. We might start with online and then move to the in-person. So here's a poll that I have for you today. How many days a week do you spend applying online, right? Uh, less than a day, one to two days, two to three, three to four, four to five, and more than five. So if you would jump in there and give me some numbers, I would appreciate it very much. Let's see, we got 15 minus three, so we've got about a dozen people today. So we're looking for at least 12 responses here, yeah. Oh, and for those people on Facebook, you're welcome just to enter uh, A, B, C, D, E, or F in the comment field. Okay. So this gives me an idea of who's uh, who the participants are. So, you know, they say that if you're going to make a presentation, you ought to know your audience. And so this helps me understand that some of you, uh, this, so we got, what, three uh, less than a day, three that's somewhere between one and two, one between two and three, one, three to four two, four to five. So a lot of us spend uh, less time than we probably should. Would you agree that we've got to spend more time networking? <laughs> Everybody pretty much says, yeah, I really I really ought to do that. Uh, people that are employed uh, who, who should also continue their networking uh, process and building relationships and doing that find it very difficult to find time just to do the networking piece. And so as we are unemployed, we do have more time. So as we plan our week, we plan our day, 
uh, we ought to be looking at how much time we spend networking and perhaps put a little more time on it. I mean, revision 72 on your resume has got to stop somewhere in there. We don't need to continue working on that forever and ever. But thank you for that information. And so uh, I think you can see the results now. So I, okay. Another poll. How many days do you spend working networking? So we spend all this time online. What do we spend on networking? Okay, we've got two people less than a day, two, one to two, four, two to three, one, two, and two. Uh, I can look at your answers and I can almost tell you how long you've been searching. <laughs> because in the early part of your search, you know, there's very little networking in the later parts when you say, well, gee, I'm, I'm getting my resume out there and I have it, I'm doing some things, but I'm just not getting results. And all of a sudden networking begins to have a, higher percentage of our time. And so that's today is to help us uh, make an effective use of our time in networking and with informational interviews. The whole purpose, you know, Jeff's purpose, all these groups that we have with people leading these group job searches, there's two objectives that we have. We want you to get the right job and we want to shorten your job search. So that's basically what we're always trying to do. And so that's what I want to help you do today. And they give you some options and ideas to how you might want to engage in informational interviews and networking. Okay. In 1971, happens to be the, my early days, some of you may not have been born then, the key to success was this, what you know, what you say, and who you know, all right? But today, it's how you use your knowledge and skills. So it's not only what you know, but how you use it. And it's how we say it as much as what we say. So we can say things, but how do we, you know, is there any energy, any passion, anything like that to differentiate us in our discussions with, in our interactions with people? And then it's who knows you? I mean, if I've got people who know me, they can help me or the possibility they can help me is much better than people who don't know me. And so the keys to success. So the six degrees of separation, you may have heard that and you can find anybody within six degrees. Boy, my little mouse is so sensitive here. But three links have a 50% 50 chance of success. So we ask, not only do we ask, who, do you know somebody? You know somebody who knows somebody. And we got a 50% chance of somebody knowing somebody that will either help us gain or seek or get a referral or gain the information that we're seeking. We ought to use that statistic. It's fantastic. We don't know how many people we know. Uh, one person said, gee, I didn't get the job at uh, the Bush Foundation. And she was at a volunteer. She was in the kitchen. They were doing some uh, food and preparation for, in a, for a nonprofit. And uh, the lady next said, oh, you should have told me. We vacation with the bushes every year. So every, you probably heard this expression. You just never know who knows somebody who knows somebody. But I'll tell you, we can find out by asking, do you know somebody who knows somebody? That is an excellent way to use that statistic so that we can get to, into a targeted company or get the information we're looking for. So who are we wanting to be in our network? Well, if I'm gonna do some networking, I surely would like to have people that have the information I'm seeking. So I do a interview success workshop. I help you with interviewing skills. And so if you wanna know some things about interviewing and maybe take the workshop, I would be a good connection to help you with that. 
and inside target companies. So we want to have target companies. There's a whole nother session on finding target companies using reference solutions uh, database through your library, get a library card, go through that, and you can find companies that meet certain parameters. They can say, here's the kind of company I'm looking for. Now I can start networking into that company. So those are important. We're never not networking. Always maintain a networking mindset. Even when we're employed, we want to grow our network, grow our relationships. So what do we need to do prior to start our networking path? We need to have a unique selling proposition. We need to say, you know, what is it that, that I do? What can I help you do? So I have one that says uh, building skills and confidence for successful hiring interviews. All right, that's just a one sentence, the unique setting proposition. Some call it your slogan or what, what it is. But there's something in there that says, I, I know what I'll do and I can tell people what it is very simply and in a few words. A resume, a biography. Now Nina's coming on tomorrow to talk about bios. Uh, uh, Jeff and I both uh, applaud the biography as one of the tools we use in our networking and information interviewing going through that. And so we get a lot of good details on that uh, with Jeff Sessions tomorrow at uh, 930. We need to have our attributes, experience, and achievements inventory. Who are we? What do we like? What are our, what are people, how are people do describe us? How would I describe myself? What experience have I had? And what have I done to combine that? who I am with what I do to how I help, which is the basic fundamentals of the selling idea in the interview success workshop. How do we sell those three things? We need to have our references prepared. I suggest we don't put them on a resume. We just, you don't have to say reference required. That tells most people we're old because that's the old way of doing it. So we don't want to do it that way. But we need to have some references. Do your due diligence on your references. Find out what they're going to say about you and find out whether you want them to be a reference or not. Your prioritized target industry and companies and information, because sometimes an information interview is just to get some information and advice and some help as we go through the path of job search. And then the potential connections that we might have on LinkedIn. Now, this person goes has a speech. Jeff has a, a recorded presentation on Crystal Nose, and I think it's based on DISC where it goes out and evaluates uh, a person's page on LinkedIn and comes back and tells you how to deal with that person. Uh, you know, all these assessments, the, the value of them is to find out how we can communicate more effectively with them in, from their background. Find stuff that's uh, common also between us. And I, I remember there used to be one you could get free. I think it was 10 before, and I don't know what it is right now, but you might want to try that. So let's try it out on Jeff, and he rates it, what, 85, 90%, I think, Jeff on uh, the one that was done uh, on him. Now I call networking relationshiping, all right? And I'm gonna use some of my own terms here as to differentiate between my terms and LinkedIn terms. A contact, contact someone we know very little about or they know little about us. How many of your LinkedIn, unquote, quote, connections are nothing but contacts. Hi, Walt, I'd like to connect with you. Boop, you're out. I don't know anything about you. I'm not gonna accept. I don't, you know, I don't know why you wanna connect with me other than you're trying to get to 500, you're trying to use me, and, I, and that's not me. I, I have this thing about networking and relationshiping, and you're not building a relationship with me by clicking a very simple button that says I'd like to connect, and that's it. So if you put a personal note in there, a little message or something, I easily connect. But it's someone we know very little about them. And, and a lot about, is it about they don't know very much about us. Now, a connection is someone with we have a relationship. And so let's kind of look deeper into the relationships. How much do they know us? What do they know about our character? What do they know about our experience? And what do we know about the value that we bring? That's the I am, I do, I help. That's the model I talk about in the workshop. High has significant knowledge, medium has some, and low has little. All right. And then there's some, there's really another one called none <laughs> that we don't know any knowledge at all about. And so we can, you know, you can download your list of connections from LinkedIn 
and you can go through and look. And one of the reasons I like to do that is because they also, when I when I download that, there's also a piece where it says, and here was the note that was sent. Here's how they know me. Here's what it is, how they connected with me. So when I go back and look at my uh, connections list, I can say, here's how I met them, here's when I met them, all that. It's all downloaded in that. So that's very good to get. Now, the second part of the dimension is uh, what's their willingness to help us. So high, I'll be happy to help. Medium, some, low, none. So what do we do with this information? Well, we focus on our list. Those who know a lot about us and are very willing to help are the A1s, right? And so we look at A1, A2, B1, and B2. So we want to build our primary list of our connections, not our contacts. So these are the people. Then we look at them and say, what knowledge they have? What do they know? What do they know about us? All that. And build that together to say, okay, here's my targets. Here are the people. I've got to find out if they are uh, will help me. i got to find out how much knowledge they have about me, that sort of thing, so I can rank them. And then I can start working on a prioritized list where I can get the most bang for the buck in time by dealing with people that fit in the A1, A2, B1, and B2 categories. Then we take our contacts and say, okay, I want to expand a contact to a connection. So I might be looking on LinkedIn and I find out that uh, Jeff, uh, he's done some manufacturing in his background. He knows a lot about that sort of thing. And I might want to get some information about manufacturing. I know maybe there's a couple of companies to work for. And so I'm going to start building a relationship with Jeff. How to build a relationship. Step one, help them first. Step two, go back to step one. <laughs> I mean, it's really about if you want to help somebody, help them first. And that's going to be the key. I build relationships through helping people and focusing on them and not on myself. Um, there is a uh, culture that says, I help you, and then you kind of want to help me back. So it's not really just a technique. It's a thing that you want to do. You want to help other people. And when we've we're got this mindset, this, I told you we need to have this networking mindset. The mindset is, when I meet somebody, I want to find out about them and see what's going on. And maybe I can give them a suggestion. Or I can help them with something. All right. That's going to be a key in building that networking process and building those relationships. Now, LinkedIn says 55% of companies say referrals are less expensive to hire. So in the networking process, we not only do we want to get information, but what we'd love to get a referral into a company, a special category of networking and informational interviews. But since companies like referrals better and they are quicker, because if they look use job boards, they say that you know, it takes longer to get hired than it does for referral. And there's a lot of reasons for this. I'll just give you one. If you've got a referral inside the company, that referral can tell you about the culture and that's a key factor for a successful job. We can get that and we can kind of bypass that and having to find all out because our informational interview with our referral process can tell us all about that. And so we're already fit. And when you get the referral, we fit into it's our job to lose. They want to hire us. All right. I'd rather get a referral from somebody inside because if nothing else, I'm lazy. I don't have time to go through all these resumes. And here's somebody that thinks they'll be good. I'd rather go after them first. All right. Faster to hire them. So let's look at networking calls. Now, number one is a cool call. That's when uh, Jeff says, oh, yeah, call Foster Williams. He's the great connector. He's the job father in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. If you want to know about it, somebody might come up, you might want to come. Just tell them I said, you know, give them my name. So when I get a hold of Foster, I say, Jeff gave me your name as a, you know, and I go with that. And so that's a passive referral, a warm call is if the referral source introduces us by phone or email. I love those. So Jeff sends out an email and says, hi, Phil. Hi, Walt. I want you to meet each other. Uh, you know each other through this, and I thought you might get together. Here's your contact information. And he just hands it off, and it's all to us now to go through and make that connection, make the phone call, and go up. All right? And so 
if he can suggest that meeting in time for us to get together, I think it'd be great if you guys had a conversation, you know, give something like that, you get a nice positive referral like that. Best is when we get, all three of us get together, all right, and introduce us. Um, and, and there's still probably a handoff in that, but there might be something, but, but we shoot for the moon, we shoot for the high, we shoot for the world. So if we get a potential referral, and they say, give me my name, I don't want to stop that. I say, well, would it be all right with you if uh, perhaps we got a conference call together where you can say hello for me? And so there's a call, that's a trilateral meeting. Okay, well, uh, would you mind contacting them and seeing if they would take a call from me? Okay, that's we're warming up the call. We don't just stop at what they say, ask for some more, some more strings, okay? The hot call, the referral calls us. And so I have a person named Jared, he works out at uh, Lockheed. And every now and then I'll send Jared, I said, I've got a person, here's their contact information. Uh, would you like to talk with them? And he sends me back and he says, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll be glad to. So then I check with the connection and I said, did you hear from Jared? Did you ever call him? He said, no, I didn't. I said, why not? Because he called me. <laughs> and Jared takes this and he jumps on the phone. And so he is, he, he is a very good positive person. Why? Probably because he went through the pit crew, the practice interview team about 10 or 11 times. He went to the workshop. He went for the job search for a year. And those of us that have been through the job search are a lot more willing to help people who have not been through the job search. They understand, they're more compassionate, and so they're willing to help. So look at how long they worked at their last company. If it's been less than a year and they've been through a job search probably, uh, that can mean, uh, get some informa good information for us. Perseverance is gonna be required, all right? This is the funnel process. You're going to find some that are, some that are not. And so that brings me to the parable of the sower, Matthew 13. So a farmer went out to sow. He scattered seed. Some fell the path. Some came in long birds. Some fell on the rocky place. I mean, all this negative stuff was going on with his sowing of the seeds. And a lot of them didn't have any fruit. But there was some that did. So how does that work in networking? So I'm talking with Jeff and he hears, you know, that I'm looking for something, but he doesn't do anything. Another person hears, yeah, well, that's, you know, I'm interested in, I'm aware that you're looking, but they also don't do much of anything. And then there's the thorny ground. They hear and they're too busy to do anything. So look, three out of four, nothing happens. It's, it's not a good statistic, right? But there's fertile ground. And so if we rank them by the A1s, A2s and B1s and B2s, we've got a better chance of hitting the fertile ground than we do the other types. I'm gonna flip it and say, which ground are you? So if somebody asks you for a next uh, contact information, are you a hard, stone, stony, thorny, or fertile ground? Okay, because we want, remember, we wanna help people. Helping them first is the helping us build those relationships and to continue doing that. So nurture our network, keeping in touch. This is critical. Uh, do you feel guilty now that you're in job search and you want to you contact me and uh, you haven't said anything to me for the last five years we used to work together and now you need help. And so now you can, you know, now you're going to contact somebody. Well, that we can avoid that. All right. We can take those A1s, A2s, B1s and B2s and periodically contact them. What's going on? What's happening? See if there's something to do to help them. Nurture that network. Build those connections and nurture those. And remember, we connect with people in their world and live the golden rule. Therefore, networking. Build relationships first. Ask for assistance second and offer to be assistance always. End of networking. Information to me. If there's any questions you have, just drop them in the chat. Or if you're Zoom, have you turned on the button to, for the space bar to uh, unmute yourself? Just jump in and interrupt me and ask questions. So let's get into the four areas of information. What is it? Why? What keeps us from doing them? And what are the steps? So we're going to get into some fundamentals right now. A lot of this you're aware of and know, uh, but I'm going to kind of review it. Some of you may be very new to the job search and uh, you haven't thought about this, and so I'm going to kind of go to that level today. 
So what is it? It's a tool to build relationships and discover how we can help, okay? And so if you look at it in that light, so I'm going to have, I, I can see Tyler there on the screen because uh, not too many people are showing Tyler. So good luck. Good, fantastic. You're going to be my example person today. And so, uh, and you know, Tyler wanted some help. He, wanted some, he sent me a note about something and said, you know, and asked me for something. And we had met somewhere and he followed up. Uh, so I'm, guess what? I recognize Tyler. I, you know, I know Tyler. He, and so if he sent me a LinkedIn connection, I would give my exception to the rule because I happen to remember Tyler. And if he does it soon, I'll probably go ahead and accept. But guess how many people send me connection requests? I get tons of them, okay? I don't know who they are. Sometimes I send back a message that says, uh, why would you like to connect with me? And I never hear anything. Nothing comes back. All right, that's that tool. Uh, so so, so there's other definitions, but we initiate really to gain knowledge or a referral. It kind of fits into those categories. It's a way of pursuing open positions. Number three, it's a conversation about a career company industry knowledge or right, information to get so that we can get some, help us move forward to our future job. So. Informational interviews can be, uh, I want to get information about an industry because I'm changing industries. And so who's in that industry? Who has knowledge about it? Who can help me with that? And so if we want to make it a conversation. And it's a good way to use the front door into a targeted company. Well, I'd love to get an internal referral. So why do we want them? Well, here's nine reasons. I think you know most of those. Now over here in the bottom right, the information that I have used from Dennis's handout, I'm going to denote. And I added this one uh, because I want, at the top says, well, let's remember the mindset. What can we do for them? How can we help? And so here's all different reasons why we want to have a informational interview. There's two areas that I use. I, so one is getting information and the other one is trying to get a referral. And I kind of put those in two different categories all right all right i got a poll for you now how about this how many of us are doing informational interviews and want to do more but uh i have some reticence so what's keeping us from doing these informational interviews what's keeping us from asking people for help what's in the, what's that so i'll put down several reasons i probably should have put down other but i'm not ready I'm not connected enough. I'm, I'm really not good at it. I don't really know how to, you know, it's kind of awkward for me to initiate the request. And, and part of that's because I find it difficult to ask for help. And then this last one is, uh, I don't want to get a negative response. And so I don't want somebody to tell me, uh, well, what you need to do is get up off your butt and get out there and do this. And you say, oh, I didn't want to hear that. I, I, don't, I don't want that information. Okay, still about half of you have not responded. I'll give you a little more time. It's anonymous. Your name doesn't go with it. Give me at least one more person, at least one more that hasn't responded yet. All right. Can you see those? You see him, Jeff? Nod or something? Yeah, I got him. I mean, well, I keep popping up there and then somebody hits. I can see him now. Yeah, everybody should be able to see All right. him. Yes, I can see him. All right, him. good. Thanks. So uh, we, we got some negativity in here, right? We kind of get too many reasons for not doing it. I'm writing these down. All right. 
So I want to take a couple of these and just talk briefly about them before I start the poll, all right? Uh, this is you, the question to ask for those that are not ready yet. I'd like you to write this down after this session and say, what am I doing to get ready? If I need to get ready, what's my plan to get ready? Instead of just saying, I'm still not ready, I'm not ready, but uh, we're, are we making progress to getting ready? All right, we need more connections, right? So uh, whose fault is that? We need to get connected. We need to initiate those connections, right? Well, I'm not good at it. Well, we have to practice it a little bit. We have to kind of figure out how to do this. And that's, uh, that's I'm hoping this session is going to help you with that today. I don't know how to initiate the request. Uh, I'm going to work on that. Uh, there's some good things in there to help us get started with initiating the request. And we don't like asking for help. Jody, is that the right pronunciation of your name, Jody? All right, Jody, I come up to you and say, Jody, I understand that you're really good at uh, using Excel and spreadsheets. And, you know, I'm trying to increase my knowledge in things with that. Um, since you're so good at it, and I really appreciate the value that you can give me, could I spend 10 minutes with you just talking about actions I need to take to really become an Excel? So my question to you, Jody, is how do you feel about my request? I'm really excited about the request in regards to having that connection and maybe like having somebody know that they like are wanting to have an interest in what I do. So that would be something that I would be excited if somebody reached out to connect because they might have something that I may need as well. Two way street. Okay, my sound is coming through really garbled. Is there anybody, can anybody else hear okay? Yeah, she so, was very garbled. Yeah. So, Jody, did I hear you say uh, you, you were kind of, was it, let me just ask you this. How did you see it as a positive thing that I asked for your help? Okay. Yes. Well, isn't that something? How many of you out there, if someone asked you for help, would say, yeah, you know, I'll be glad to help you, right? Yet we're afraid to ask. Therefore, I suggest we try to learn how to give people the opportunity to help us. It makes them feel good. <laughs> Why don't we do that? Uh, you know, helping people uh, in a job search, you want to do something during your job search, volunteer, help others. It makes us feel good. It's a great activity to do. And so when we're, uh, you know, we, we're, we don't know how to initiate, we don't know how to ask or something like that. There are so many people out there that are willing to help, and we're letting that stop us. So it's our fault that we're not letting people help us. All right, a little bit different approach on that. Okay. <clears throat> uh, just ask that one, how you feel? A little story about the Kroger cashier. So I'm in Kroger. Uh, I just lost my wife about seven years ago. So I go through Kroger and I got bread, I got peanut butter, I got jelly, I got a tomato, I've got some lettuce, uh, I got some cheese. <laughs> and she says, is that all you're going to get? And I said, well, yeah, for right now. And uh, I said, uh, I, I actually, and I, I just confess, I said, I'm just trying to get by right now. I'll probably have to learn how to cook since I've lost my wife. He said, oh, I'm sorry that you lost your wife. And then she says, I can teach you how to cook. And here's a cashier. I don't even know her. I don't know her name. I don't know anything about her, anything. And she says, I can teach you to, I can help. I didn't ask for help. And she said, oh, I can teach you how to cook. Okay. I guess she thought I had a lot of money. I don't know what the real reason was. That's information that will really help us get over our barriers for asking for help because people like to help us. So let's go through some steps of the informational interview. One, get focused, know who we are, who I am, what we do, and how we can help, okay? So here's the kind of areas I'm looking for. I am this kind of person, I have this kind of knowledge and experience, and I can combine those to achieve these kinds of results is the value that I bring. So we got to have a focus on that. Now, what kind of position and what kind of information do I want? So if I'm targeting a particular job or I'm looking for some particular information, what is it that I'm looking for? 
Now I got to find out who has that info. Very simple process. Who can help us connect? And now, not only can maybe that person has the info, but they may know someone else who can help us get that info. Remember, you know someone or you know someone who knows someone who could help me learn how to cook. All right. And so like I says, go to Colin College and go to cooking school. Eat your broccoli. All right. So identify the people who can help us with that information. Now, that means we have to start finding out who they are and asking the question. And that's our approach of asking. Then we got to research people, company, industry, company, et cetera. Where, where do we look for these? Uh, I'm kind of amazed at people who send me a note and say, hi, Walt, I'd like to register for the interview success workshop. How do I do that? Well, they didn't read my LinkedIn about page. They didn't, they didn't look me up. They didn't find out anything about me. I'm saying, well, here's something I suggest we do. Before you talk to anybody, look them up. <laughs> find out something about them. Get some of their history. One of the best things we can do is see if there is something that we have in common, a connect point. We went to the same school. Uh, we may have had the same type of job. We're interested in the same type of activities. Uh, whatever it might be, how, how that can help us. Right? Research people, research. Don't walk in and talk to a person that likes to learn something about your industry and you know nothing about the industry. I mean, do some homework. You're learning some things. And so you've got some questions you can ask and, and, you, and you've got some intelligent questions you know, about that industry that you can ask. All right. So don't walk in just with a blank sheet of paper. Do your research before you even get to the conversation. For those of you that are having trouble getting started, then I suggest we prepare scripts to get the interview. So this is where uh, Dennis O'Hagan came in. He put some, di some different things out there for scripts. But let me talk about this basic structure of an informational interview call. I'm gonna introduce myself when I call you, I talk to you. So I say, hello, Tyler, my name is Walt Glass. All right, I'm gonna identify you, say who I am. I know you through, I heard of them by, somebody said, I saw you on LinkedIn. I, you know, what information do you have that says, how did you learn about me? How did you know me? How did you, what, you know, give me something about that to get, to get us started. Now, I'm gonna say, why do we value their advice and their counsel and their insight? Uh, it can fit under the heading of complimenting the other person. Jeff, you have been in this job search business now for years, and you've seen so many different presentations. And I know that you do stuff on LinkedIn. Who would you say are the, you know, maybe the top three people that I might need or might want to talk to about LinkedIn? And he's going to say, well, Terry Sullivan does this. He's going to have, you know, he's got about six people that do LinkedIn stuff. And he might suggest that for me, all right? But I'm, I'm, but I'm giving Jeff a comment since he knows everybody. He knows us, everybody. He's got this stuff. And I value your information. It's worthwhile to me, okay? That means a heck of a lot to me when somebody says, you know, you're, 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 you have a lot of info. You have a lot of knowledge. And boy, I'll tell you, I really appreciate that. And I'd like to gain some of that. Well, okay, I'm a go-to guy. And they're asking me if it makes me feel good that you're asking me with that. All right. Now, here's you got to put a statement in here, and there's several depending on your objective. But if you're doing career research, if that's it, you can say, well, uh, I'm looking, I'm in my career change, and I'm researching this information, or I'd like to find out about this, or I'd like to know more about whatever it might be, okay? Specifically what it is that you're looking for. If you are... You don't have to say that you're in career search. You can just say, I'm really interested in this kind of industry, this kind of information, and I'm trying to get more research on that. If they come back and say, well, why are you doing that? It says, well, I'm, I'm looking at different paths for my career. Or you can say it out front. You can come up either way. But what is it you want to talk about? Do you have your prepared list of questions that you want to ask? All right. <clears throat> 
explain you're not contacting them to ask for a job. Now that's that's a optional step at some point in time. Uh, and that's why we'd like to use the bio instead of the resume. Resume says I'm looking for a job. Bio says his information about me. But if you're not specifically looking for a job and you, they think that you're looking for a job, then I'd say, no, no, I'm not looking for a job. I'm just looking for this information. Okay. And then I'm going to suggest how we can meet to talk about it. Not just one, but two is now a good time. For example, uh, when I call and talk to people, one of the first things I generally say is, uh, well, Jeff, am, are you in the middle of something? And I, am I interrupting you? Well, yes, I am interrupting him. <laughs> but in a way, I'm saying, if now is not a good time to talk, I'll call you back. So I'm thinking about them and their frame of reference because I'm interrupting whatever he's doing. And my, now might not be a good time to talk, all right? But then I suggest, okay, well, when would it be a good time? I can call you Tuesday at two, Thursday at four. Would any of those be good? And be specific, all right, to, to get some times. And then maybe you can go back and forth and get some times to get on the calendar, all right? We are in charge of our job search, not them. Phrase not to use. I know you're busy. Oh, don't do that. You just gave me a reason not to do anything. I know you're busy. <laughs> So let's don't tell them that, all right? We don't want to sell that. So be specific. So, hi, I'm Fred Johnson. I know you this way. Here's what we have in common. I'm interested in this particular knowledge. Specifically, I'm looking for these types of people who might have that information, who can provide this specific information and maybe some thoughts on additional information, all right? Kind of the structure of how we would do this in our scripts. With your, while you value them, I might you know, think that you might know the kind of people that I'm looking for, all right? Do you know someone or know someone who knows someone who can give me that information or who fits this description? Referral requests. And so uh, when you're looking for specifically for a referral, I met you, this, I'm interested in this, I'm looking for finance executives who might provide insights into healthcare, finance. I think of someone that here's, here's why I value your advice. The word advice is huge. It's very key. When you give advice and I'm interested in getting your advice, does anybody ask for your advice anymore? Does anybody ask you for your opinion? Does anybody want to talk? No, we don't get that very much. We say, gee whiz, I know a lot of stuff and, and uh, I'm, I'm, I can do a lot more of my job than I'm doing, et cetera. But when I ask for somebody and I say, Jody, I'm, you know, I know that you know a lot about this and I'm really interested in what advice you might give me as to how you might help me make a decision on a career path that I'm, in, um, that I'm you know, potentially may take. Something like that, right? All right. Let's say they give us a name. I want to do some due diligence. So, uh, Jody, how do you know Tyler? All right. And what is it about them that you think they would be a good contact for me? How would you, uh, what way would you say is the best way to contact Tyler? Would you be willing to contact them, contact Tyler, and see if they take my call? Or may I use your name when I call Tyler? Is there anybody else you think I should talk to? Just don't get one. Ask for two. Ask for three. All right. And then the I help. How can I help you? What can I do for you? Is there something I can do to help you? Be sure to follow up with your connection. This is a tragedy. There are times when uh, I spent about four hours one day. Someone asked me for a connection. Uh, at a company. So I went through my connections list on LinkedIn. And I said, okay, here's people that might be able to help. So I'll put down, here's their name. Here's their LinkedIn URL. Here's how I know them. Here's when I connected with them. Okay. And sent all that information out. I got an email back said, thanks. And I've never heard a word since, not a single word. We want to know if the advice we gave has been helpful to you. 
and we don't even tell them. We want to go back and say, I just want to let you know that I contacted Tyler. We had a good conversation. It's very fruitful. Thank you so much for connecting me with Tyler. Okay. We got to go back and say thank you to these people who are doing this stuff, not just a simple thanks. So when a contact doesn't give you a referral, so okay, well, thank you very much. Now you got some options. What would you say would be my next steps? How might I find out more information, specific information? And what would you do if you were in my shoes? Here's some ideas to say, all right, so they don't want to go through the referral, but let's see if we can't get some beneficial information from them anyway. Appreciate your time. How can I help you? Now, these scripts are in there. I'm not going to go through all of them that, that, that much because you can read them and they're also in the handout. But here's how I can call you uh, with a referral. <laughs> so I speak with Joe. Here's, he suggested I contact you. I'm here making some career decisions. I'm looking for your valuable advice and experience. I just want a brief meeting. I'm not looking for a job if you want to put that in there. And so I really am interested in getting some advice and some insight from you in the marketplace. And now I want to set some times and dates for a meeting. I don't want to say, you know, sometimes, you know, uh, Tyler, we will say, you know, we got to eat lunch one day, Tyler. And that's the end of that. <laughs> but if I say, Tyler, let's eat lunch one day. Are you free Thursday? <laughs> right, there's the difference. Go for it. Push for it. So with Tuesday, Wednesday, 2 p.m., you know, whatever it is, pick some dates. I suggest staying away from Mondays and staying away from Fridays. Monday morning is what? Staff meeting day. What is Friday? Trying to catch up and do everything so I can leave the office for the weekend. All right? Busy days. So Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday are, are the best days. All right, let's move along. What are the key words in this a script. I'm, I'm making career decisions. I'm looking for so your valuable advice, a brief meeting. Again, I give advice, insight. All right. So I'm taking these key words and say, build your scripts with these key words as guidelines as to what to say. I want to make sure I do that. And I put in a, a kind of a sample one in an earlier slide. I found your name and guess what? We're both in the sales and business development data, you know, database. I'm looking for some career decision. I think you could give me some really valuable advice with all your experience. My question is a brief meeting. Tell us to get some advice, Tuesday, Wednesday. Now, when you talk about a meeting, I suggest you put a time frame on it. I don't like ranges because one party is hearing the low number and the other party is hearing the high number. Therefore, I said, I'd like to meet with you for 15 minutes. I'd like to meet with you for 20 minutes. And then when we meet with them, when the 15 minutes are up, you stop. When the 20 minutes are up, you stop. You do not go further unless they were so. Now, I, I want to I respect your time. The 20 minutes is up. I want to thank you for that time. I'm available if you'd like to talk. But sometimes I want to talk with you longer. But keep your promises. Keywords, career changes or decisions. What's the purpose and goal? What advice and insight and suggestion can you give me? Brief meeting, 20 minutes and specific scheduling. So take a look at those and say, okay, when I build this, write my scripts down because I'm not used to doing this. So I'm gonna write a script to help me get started. And then I'm gonna read that and do that for a few times until I begin to get comfortable with it. Okay, practice on people you know. Practice on people that you know that might be able to help you. And then here's a referral that suggests I call you. Uh, other openings, I found your name here. So how do you know about them? How did you learn about them? No referrals. I'm in the process of making some important career decisions. So I'm going to call somebody and I don't, I don't know. I maybe found them, you know, somewhere. I didn't get a referral at all. But here's how I know you. Get an opportunity for about 20 minutes or so. So now... We're going to get objections. So here's another thing that Dennis put into this to his handout, handling objections. And he says, okay, here's how you handle that all the time. See you. Now I know that you're busy, but I'm only asking for a few minutes. Would it be more convenient for you to do this over the phone? In other words, when we're in sales, 
and you reach the first objections, do professional salespeople stop there? No. All right. They're always trying to get to the yes in their sales process. And so if they want to blow us off or they don't have time or whatever it is, so, okay, I understand you don't have time right now, but how about some time next week at Wednesday or something like that? Can we do that? Find some time. Don't just stop when they put up the objection. Oh, just send me your resume. Be glad to, but at this time, I'm only looking for some information and advice. So keep pushing forward. So these are some examples. You can look at the handout. Uh, those that say, I don't think I can help you. Well, look, based on your knowledge and information you have, I think you know a lot more than you give yourself credit for. And you certainly know more than I do about this. And I'd be really excited to understand and hear some of the things that you have, perspectives that you have. Could I meet with you at? Then we're going to a time frame. Send me your resume. I'd be glad to, but I'm only looking. Same type of approach. You can see the, the continuity in these and saying, uh, keep pushing. Don't let the first objection stop you from trying to continue on. All right. You can look at the handout for seeing some of these and how they might help you as you prepare your script. So this is good for people who don't know how to initiate. This is good for people who are saying, I um, um, don't know how to ask, ask for, I don't like asking for help. Okay, let's write it down. Let's try it out. So uh, Tyler, he says, Jody, I'm, I'm going to, I want to try out my uh, introductions and, and stuff. And so here's a couple and we practice them with people that we know so that we can get comfortable with them, okay? Transfer you to the head of recruiting. Well, that's not too bad if you can get to the head of recruiting. However, you still ask for both. Said, okay, well, I can talk with you. And I also would like to talk to recruiting. Don't have any contacts. All right. Prepare your questions. Use your research. How many questions? Assuming 20 minutes, 10. If the average takes two minutes, have 20. All right. Prioritize them and then use the ones that are most important. And then if you can't get to all of them, that's fine because we're certainly not going to be able to cover 20 questions in 15 or 20 minutes. So it's going to go back and forth into this conversation. Be sure we prioritize them, all right? What's your objective for each meeting? And what are the fewest number of questions I can ask to reach that objective? Always include the how I can help you. Now, they might turn around and say, Well, Tyler, tell me about you. All right, what are you looking for? You know, how can I help you? All right. Now we're, guess what? We just started an interview. We just morphed from an information interview into a potential hiring interview. What are you doing? What are you looking for? And so we need to be prepared for that. And that's why in the preparation, we said, I know I can describe who I am, what I do, and how I can help. How can I help you? Well, contact other people, information you can provide have about three target companies at least available. I'll let you look at these in the handout. Uh, there's all kinds of questions that you can put in there. I just copy these over from Dennis. They're as good as any of things you might look at, but what's important to you? What's the important thing that you wanna find out in the, what's the objective and purpose? With that objective and purpose of what you're specifically looking for, then you can come up with three or four questions that'll help you reach that objective. All right. The interview itself, the opening, introduce ourselves and purpose, talk about them first, compliment them, build a relationship first, brief information about yourself that helps them help us, and then have our prepared questions, take notes, and look for areas and items where we can help them in our questions. The closing of the interview, it's all over. Appreciate the advice. It's very helpful, should improve. You know, it should make a difference. I'm gonna tell them, with that information, you know, it, it's really valuable. You gave me some good stuff. I really like what you said. Let me ask you one other thing. Do you know a couple of other people that would be able to help me who I could talk to? I like to do more research and conduct it more. And when you get one, so do you know anybody else? You know, ask for more than one, ask for two, maybe three. Who else should I talk to? How should I get in contact with them? You go back to that slide. So, okay, what's the best way to reach them? How do I contact them? Would you 
Can you warm up the call? Can you send them a note? Introduce me, et cetera, et cetera. If they provide a referral, oh, well, I got to fix this slide. Uh, can we use, which is now one word in the English dictionary, their name? How do you know them? Do you do diligence on that person? Why would they be good? All right. If they don't provide a referral, you know, thank them anyway is always offer assistance. So ask them, how can I be of assistance to you in a follow up item discovered during the interview? It may be an article in uh, a journal. It may be a connection or a contact with someone that they're looking for help and say, oh, I know someone that might be able to help or whatever, whatever it might be. Offering alone will make a huge difference, even if they don't come up. But if we, during the process of asking questions, are looking for things in the areas where that we might give them some information that would be beneficial to them. So we're doing two things. We're finding out how they can help us. We're looking as to how we can help them, what it can be beneficial. And we want to make sure that we follow up and see if we can give some help to them. If you've made a commitment, reconfirm them at the end, okay? We're going to meet Tuesday, two o'clock. You'd like to meet more person-to-person, uh, -person, more than online, so ask for the in-person before you ask for the in online, or you ask for the phone call. So it's in-person, online, then phone call, okay? And then snail mail, I guess, if you want to send them a letter. Then, if this is, a, a, you know, the situation that's right, if you hear of any opportunities or someone with my interest and qualification, I appreciate being kept in mind and pass on my name to others. Now, what I'm going to do is when I say that, I'm going to send them some notes and follow up and say, I just want to let you know how um, much I appreciate our meeting. I've used this kind of information, let you know that I'm still interested in this, and I'm still interested to see if you know of any, you know, any information, you know, and this is a way of, of keeping in touch with them. And It'd be great if you had some information to help them before you put down the information to help you. Stay within the time limit. Be ready to start an interview. Have your business cards, bio, and resume handy and be prepared for that job interview. And lastly, doing the follow-up. Thank you notes and tracking. Suggested, you know, you got to keep track of everything you do. Uh, you know, computers today spend 75% of the time keeping track of what they do and 25% of their time doing it. They keep track of everything. Well, that's what we have to do as well. When, when do we contact? What's the next thing I do? What happened to that? What's the next step? What's the immediate purpose of the next step, et cetera? Last thing I have is uh, for those of us that want to make a change and we're kind of uncomfortable doing it, here's a little process that I suggest we do it. So I want to get comfortable with informational interview. I want to get comfortable for asking for help. I want to get comfortable for requesting uh, assistance or that sort of thing. So here's what I'm going to stop doing. I'm going to stop making excuses for not making the change. If you want to change something, the first step is to recognize you want to make a change. And step two, basically is, okay, what do I need to start doing? Uh, I like Nike's phrase, no, just do it, just start doing it. Uh, and it, it may not go so well, well like you want it right at first, but the more you do it, the easier this is gonna be. It takes a little bit of practice. Give ourselves permission to make the change, all right? And saying, I can start this because it's a high priority for me. I can do that. And I want to show you, know, here's the reason I'm doing it. So I'm going to say, okay, I can do this. Start small and build up, all right? Start with someone we know. And then it becomes a habit, staying focused. Uh, when we get a job, we still want to continue to build our network. Those people with a large network of people they keep in touch with, uh, keep having a great relationship with. Uh, when they lose the job, uh, these are the people that will know us and will probably help us. They fit into the A1 category. We want to build A1 category relationships with people all of our lives, all right, in many different areas, not just in job, but it might be in other things as well. There's three types of people, those who make it happen, those who watch and those who wonder what happens. Networkers make things happen. If you're interested in the interview success workshop, 
If you want to talk about that, look me up on LinkedIn. There's my contact information right there on my banner page on LinkedIn, my email address to request, and my phone number right there on the page, okay? This is also a QR code that, hey, I'd like to register if you want to send me an email. So yeah, I'm interested and in, want to see if I can register for the workshop. That will help you. And I have Q&A. You might have any questions or want to discuss anything in that QR code. There's the same thing for an email to talk about the workshop. What do you think? Walt, thank you very, very much. If anybody has any questions, you're welcome to unmute your mic and ask away. Questions, questions, questions. So I have a question for you. Uh, you can put it in the chat or just say, what one thing are you going to do differently as a result of this session? I would just say start networking, even if I don't know if it's the right people or not, just start going, getting out there and stop overthinking it. So, Okay. And do you go to job search groups, Tyler? Yes, I do. But I've just gotten like advice to search down certain paths. And I just kind of say, oh, I couldn't do that. Or I couldn't. Yeah, I couldn't. but in these networking groups, you know, you know, networking with the unemployed is not as good as networking with the employed. Well, here's a good practice. And you see, Jody, huh? Jody, what brings you here? What are you looking for? What are you doing? How can I help you? And then you turn around and say, well, you know, here's what I'm looking at. Practice with people who, you know, there's just, there's really no pressure to introduce yourself to people and get to know them. Step out. All right. Anybody else? Yeah, this is Jody. Um, can you hear me okay on your end? Uh, no. If you speak slowly between words, I think I can hear you. Okay. Okay. Sorry, I've got some AirPods in my ears. Um, I think it's just getting out of my comfort zone. I've networked with people, and people have tried to network, you know, with me, and then it just falls off because when they ask me, "Hey, reach out and let me know if there's anything I can help," I don't know what I need help with besides finding a job, and I don't mean that in a you know, an arrogant way. It's just okay. So let's back you know. up. You have to start identifying information you're looking for. It might be about a company, it might be an industry, it might be a person, it might be mm -hmm. advice. You say, you know, I, I tell people I'm going to write a book. It says how to find a job in 142 easy steps. So it might be uh, where should I, where should I, how do I start? What do, what do I need to do? So if we're new to the job search, Help me get started. In that light, uh, look up, is it 8 o'clock or 9 o'clock Monday, Clayton Stockdall's Career Search Network, in-person job search class in Fort Worth. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. Uh, look on the calendar. If you're, you, if you're not familiar with Jeff's calendar, Put that on your action item list. You do not end the day without being familiar with careerdfw.org and you go to the calendar function and see what's going on and what's happening and some of the resources that are out there. Uh, on October the 7th, there is a Saturday workshop coming up. Uh, it'll be at St. Jude Church. If you want more information on it, it's a day long. It's uh, from nine to three, I think. Uh, and it talks about knowing yourself, your marketing materials, networking, and interviewing. And so we cover kind of all of that. Uh, there's a book that's available. It'll go through all the steps that could help you. So that's another resource. If you want more information on that, Jody, send me an email. Okay, say so I'd like more information on the October 7th job search day. So is that the one? Is that one different than the one they're having this Saturday? Oh yeah, you can go earlier, Jeff. You're right. There's one at. Uh, I forget the name of the church. It's over on uh, Arapaho, and uh, it's just off of Arapaho, east of Preston, west of Hillcrest. Is it on the calendar? Uh, yes, it is. And it starts at. 
Yeah, that's the only one I know about from eight to nine to four or something, eight to four. Yeah, something, uh, nine or something like that. And lunch is included and you get a book too. Right. Yeah, they do them quarterly. The reason I know about October the 7th is I'm supposed to be part of the team. Okay. That day. It'll be a little bit different. Uh, I do want to go ahead and just point out, Walt, thank you. I want to point out to everybody, if you'd like to download the couple of handouts we've got, if you go to the careerusa.org website, click on resources, come down here to video and handouts, click on that and scroll down till you see networking. And we've got two different handouts here. Number one, here's the handout from Dennis O'Hagan. And then here's another handout. This handout is actually from uh, Kurt Vondemotter. And this is just a sort of another an email list that you can go to send out with your contacts. So these are two things you may want to just sort of uh, download all about networking. Um, Career FW, Career USA, we're putting on training four days a week. Please join us. Uh, this Thursday, let's see here. So tomorrow morning at the North Dallas Plano Career Focus Group. This is a great follow-up to today's presentation because we talked about, you know, uh, connecting, you know, how do you connect with other people? You don't want to just blindly send out a resume, but you need to have a one-page bio that tells somebody who you are, what you do in a sort of a high-level thing. It's a great networking tool. Min is going to talk all about it. Uh, she wrote a book about it a few years ago. They revised it. The new book has several, has about 30 different bios in the back of it. So it's a if you can join us tomorrow morning, it'd be a great presentation. Uh, we are meeting in person. If you'd like to join us, if you live in the DFW area, come join us in person. Otherwise, uh, if you can watch us on Zoom or Facebook Live, if you live outside the DFW area. Next Tuesday, our presentation for LinkedIn Tuesdays will be with me. LinkedIn, present yourself like a pro. Next Wednesday, the practice interview team being the fifth Wednesday of the month. There is a real practice interview. It's already been scheduled. We have somebody uh, lined up to go next Wednesday so you can watch a real practice interview online. Uh, next Thursday being the fifth Thursday of the month, I'm gonna do a presentation on successful job searches, focus on these four areas. So these I think are the four most important areas and you sort of need to get step one down before you get to step two. Walt talked about the 154 uh, steps in his book. Uh, I'm going to break it. I'm going to break it down to just four areas you need to work on in this specific order. We'll talk about those next Thursday. If you'd like to join the Career DFW or Career USA LinkedIn groups, expand your connections. You're welcome to join one or both. You do not need to live in the DFW area to join the Career DFW group. We've got over 14,900 members in that group. The group is growing. Um, it's probably one out of 15 members are in HR. They're human resources. They're trying to find you. So if you join the group, please be sure you've got a LinkedIn profile that's mostly complete because it'll be, uh, there's no reason to be on LinkedIn if you are if you don't have a mostly complete profile. This session has been recorded. It will be on the Career DFW, Career DFW Facebook page. And in a couple hours, it'll be uploaded and on the Career USA YouTube channel. On the Career USA YouTube channel, we've got over 530 videos. So click on playlist and there's one of seven different playlists that you can pick, pick networking. And down where you see that red circle, click on view full playlist and up will come a list of all the different dates and topics and speakers of who talked about what for networking. Uh, so this is the easiest way to go back and watch any of these presentations. And you know, I walk, skipped a few slides and you can go back and capture those by watching his presentation. Like I said, it'll be up later this afternoon. If you're not receiving emails about our workshops, you're welcome to uh, scan this QR code over on the right. Uh, what it'll do is it'll generate an email. Just hit send. You don't have to put anything in the email. It'll get you signed up if you're not getting our emails. Uh, or you can just send an email to careerusa, the plus sign, subscribe at groups.io. Uh, the emails, you'll never be spammed, but what you will get is the topic of the day, the title of the day, and most importantly, the Zoom link of the day. That way you can join us on Zoom or Facebook Live. Please remember, Career FW, we're a 501c3 nonprofit organization. Walt's a volunteer. I'm a volunteer. Everything I've done over the last 15 years has just been to help you land your next great opportunity. 
So thank you very much for joining us today, everybody. Walt, thank you once again. Great presentation. Uh, and hopefully we'll see you tomorrow morning.